Good morning, everyone. Hi, so thanks all for coming. Um, we're here to talk to you about how to create learning impact through partnership. Not anymore, we're not. <laughs> and get used to the technology. Uh, so, my name is Simon Chilly. I'm Programme Director at Read Learning. Uh, I'm joined this morning by Teresa Ewington, Learning and Development Manager at Thames Water. And we're going to spend a little bit of time this morning talking to you, hopefully about something a little bit different, hopefully something that, uh, that you won't see at any of the other presentations. I've been coming here for a number of years. I spent uh, a lot of time sitting where you guys are sitting. Um, and there, there are a lot of really good things that you'll hear about today. A lot of themes that come through for me. A lot about bringing content closer to the learner. A lot of stuff about how we can build bridges between classroom and online and get learners closer to the content. There's a lot of stuff about getting data closer to learning and development professionals. What we're here to talk to you about this morning is how to bring the organization closer to the learning provider about how through partnership and collaboration, you can create a greater level of impact. There are lots of really great tools out there which will help you measure impact. And there are some which you'll talk to us about on stand four or any other stand in, uh, in, in this exhibition today. But before you can measure that impact, you have to create it. And there are a number of things which, working together with Thames Water, we've managed to create at, uh, at Thames. And we're going to talk to you about some of those, a little bit about how we did it, a little bit about what it means for us, and how we can do that for you. Uh, there's two parts, really, to, to this. There's my bit, the, the read learning part, and then, more importantly, the perspective of one of our key clients, Teresa from, from Thames Water. Uh, so strap yourselves in. Uh, there, there's not going to be a lot of information on the slides. You've got the, uh, the bit of paper that was left on your chair, which hopefully you'll find interesting and, and useful. We'd be more than happy to talk to you about any of the detail on that and, and anything else you'd like to, uh, to quiz us on. Join in if you want. I'm mic'd up. You're not, but I can probably hear you if you, uh, if you shout out. If you want me to go over anything, give you a bit more detail, let me know. I'll leave some time at the end for, for questions, but there's time in the middle as well. So join in whenever you like. We'll interrupt each other, so we don't mind if you interrupt us as well. Um, so a little bit about who we are then. Uh, so Teresa will tell us a little bit about Thames Water. OK, so I don't know how much you know about Thames Water. I certainly know you all use what we produce uh, and that stuff that falls down from the sky, which most people think should be for free, shouldn't it? <laughs> you don't mind paying your gas and you're lucky. Well, what's this water bill's about? Uh, let's get the first awkward thing out of the way. Thames Water does pay tax. Please don't believe what you read in the paper. We do have a tax bill and I promise we pay it. Um, so I'm quite happy to answer any general questions about Thames Water later on. Um, it's a really funny place, Thames Water. It's the old water board, um, long, long history of providing water and taking care of that loo flushing bit we do for you as well. We've got 15 million water customers. So right now, there's 50 million customers right from London, right across to Oxford, down towards Guildford in Surrey. And our job is to make sure that you can turn your tap on and have drinkable water. Not just drinkable water, but the best quality in the UK. Uh, that's our job. And also we've got 10 million customers who rely on us to be able to flush your loo and not have to worry about it. So I don't know if anyone's been abroad to some of the islands, some of the Greek islands, and it's a bit of a relief when you get home and you can flush the loo roll down the toilet again, because you couldn't do that when you're on holiday. And then you like us. So it's a really funny company to work for, and I've been there for two and a half years. Okay? So uh, we're probably kind of, uh, in many ways, you definitely need us, but you might not always understand it. And to be honest, I didn't until I got there. And I've come from a policing background. It's such a mishmash. Uh, there are people who've worked for Thames Water for 40 plus years and their dad worked for us and their granddad worked for us and their son or their daughter's coming in as an apprentice. So we have got families that have been with us for generations. And then we have grads and apprentices and we've got people coming in from other uh, utility companies giving us a different perspective. So in my classroom, because I'm, you know, I'm a real L&D person today. In my classroom, is such a range of expectations. Before I even get onto the technology, I've got to land what happens in the room. Now, when I came into Thames Water, what that looked like was I got given a list. And I wonder if anyone's been in this place. Communication skills, presentation skills, time management skills, effective listening skills. And I walked into a shopping list. And I was like, oh, we got some work to do together, Thames Water. I don't know if that's really what you want. But to be honest, what they've done before is work with suppliers who I think had seen them coming. And if they said, I want time management, they gave them time management. Me and my team, the first group of people arrived that know what we're talking about, about L&D. So for those of you sometimes, we'll come on to talk about, you know, sometimes it's a lonely place being the L&D manager because no one else really speaks our language. 
and we're always the one having to be bilingual. Okay. So in terms of Thames Water, that's us, 5,000 employees with a whole range of expectations, a huge customer base. You be in our world on Christmas Day night or Boxing Day morning when you've 14, you know, what, 10 million people have eaten too much food? That's all I'm saying. Any time you want to come and visit us on Boxing Day to one of our sites, all right, you'll be very, very welcome. Um, you know, when we talk about turnover, you, you know, we've issued our financial results this year. It's a funny place, everyone's got an opinion. And Robinson's got an opinion, the press have got an opinion, and our customers have an opinion. But honest to goodness, I can tell you that the science I see every day in Thames Water blows my mind away. Okay? We put in a planning application recently for the Thames Tunnel, some of you might have heard of it. Largest privately funded planning application uh, in the UK ever. It is massive. And there are some really smart people working where I work. And they're very demanding, aren't they? Okay, so it's a real mixed bag. And when I talk about magic, you know, some of the stuff I might talk about in the case study, you'll go, we've been doing that for ages where you come from. I kind of had to start from scratch. Uh, and that's very much what we built with Reed. We really started from scratch, which is get this rubbish out, get the magic in. So it gives you initial flavor. Okay, um, so very quickly, some stuff about Reed Learning. You may know of us already. You might recognise our logo from the from the high street from uh, from Reed Specialist Recruitment. We're part of that group, founded in 1960 by Sir Alec Reed. Uh, we Reed Learning formed in 1995 to satisfy a very similar need to up maximise people potential in organisations. Our sole purpose is to make sure that organisations have the right people in the right place who are capable of doing the right things. Part of the larger Reed Group, we deliver in 30 countries. Uh, last year. So we have a global footprint as part of the Read Global Group. We read learning delivered learning into 30 different countries last year. So a global enterprise that trained 100,000 learners last year. You can find much more about us on Stand 4. It's not about us uh, for the next half an hour, but just an intro into what read learning is about. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more now about what we've done with, with Thames Water, a little bit about what Thames Water wanted, what they needed, how we gave it to them, and how you can do the same. Uh, so I'll for some more on what the, uh, the solo learning and development professional experience is. So uh, I think you've got to be pretty nuts to get in our field of expertise, um, but I'm a kind of a nutty person and it fits me beautifully. But it's hard. It is hard. Because in terms of the skills to influence, I don't know about you, but I'm often the only one who can see things right across the business. Everyone I kind of interact with is very responsible for their part of a business. My job, if I get it right, is to see the whole bit. That is hard some days. And also, I think, you know, the tiring bit as well is whatever they know to be important, it's my job to get the importance of it. So what's really important in Thames Water is how do we get customers to believe that we've got 5,000 people who really care about them genuinely because it's tough working for Thames Water some days. You know, I found it easier to tell people I work for the police than I did to tell them I work for Thames Water. You know, I've got a few gripes about a parking ticket. The conversations I have now because I work for a water company are wholly different. Um, but it's, it's sometimes at that place I've got a small little specialist group of people that work with me so we get it. But sometimes it's quite tiring getting everybody else to get it. You know, and that Colgate smile we've all got to have and that positivity and that absolutely here to support you. Our job is to bring this to life for you. Um, if you just get out of the way sometimes, that would help too. You know, if you could stop being your own worst enemy and just maneuver to the left and let me through. And I think probably all been there. So to be honest, you know, part of what I wanted to do was find somebody who spoke my language where I could just go, Ooh, so this is what I'm up against. How do I do it? It's interesting as well because everyone's got an opinion about what we do, don't they? Yeah? So I don't have an opinion about pipes because there's people in the business who know what they're doing about pipes. I might go, ooh, that's a very nice, big, large pipe. That's very cool. Almost like you do at home. Do you know what I mean? When your husband or your wife says something, you think, I'm meant to nod now and go, cool, that's cool. And sometimes I have to do that at work. And I have no idea what they're talking about but it's very cool, all right? But I, I rarely get that back. When I'm talking about what we want to create and how it's going to be, and I'm like this, and enthusiastic and passionate, and every so often they look back and go, okay, what are you talking about, you know? So that's what I mean about sometimes it's quite a lonely place to be, and sometimes you need to go and find a friend. 
but you don't always want a friend that agrees with what you say. Okay? I actually wanted to find a bit of a sparring partner. Because there's only me, and then there's the team I manage. Now, best one in the world, you'll go so far in challenging your boss, but very few people go all the way. And I needed to find someone that would go all the way and say, are you sure? Have you thought about, what about this? Because there's no way I think I've got all the answers. I, I know there's a nugget there somewhere, but I wanted to find someone that would help me take it all the way through. You know? Plus, I knew that to get this to work in Thames Water, I kind of had to plant my feet in concrete and be brave. Make no mistake, I think our job is about being very brave with some of the challenges that we come up against. So, whilst I might not have Superman pants on the outside, I definitely wear them. All right. So, and that's what I mean about going and finding somebody. And it was my first experience as well of working with, it, with outsourcing learning and development. Before, I'd always had a training function. And now I was like, oh, are, where's the trainers? There's no trainers. So, oh, okay. Right then, let's go and start from scratch. And that's what we did. We put out a whole brand new tender. And we put it all up for grabs. So, that's what I mean about that. And so, um, what we saw when we arrived at Thames Water, we saw a hugely passionate organisation. I think you can see that from, from Teresa, but throughout the organisation, what they do keeps people alive. If they don't put water in your tap, you can't drink the water. If that water is unhealthy, you're going to get ill. People really passionate about making a difference to people's lives. And that carried through into the central functions, into learning and development. What we can tell from Teresa is that she absolutely loves what she does. Absolutely loves learning and development. Really believes that the way the training, the classroom stuff, all the learning is, uh, is delivered needs to be magic. Needs to be something a little bit more than time management, communication skills, effective listening, all of that kind of stuff. So we set about a journey to understand what that looks like. What, what does that mean? When someone says, yeah, create me magic, sure. I mean, everyone wants magic, but it means something different to, uh, to everyone else. So we followed the, the, a process that we, uh, that, that we have, a model that we use, a way that we engage with, uh, with customers. And a lot of these words will be extremely familiar to you, and you'll probably think, yeah, of course, we do exactly the same thing all the time anyway, and of course you do. But it's worth having. It's worth knowing what you're doing. It's worth knowing why you're doing it. So step one, listen. We, listen probably is understand probably not just about asking questions and getting the right answers back, though that's a huge part of what we do. It's about getting under the skin of the business, spending time out on a sewage treatment works for Thames Water, finding out what the people there do for a living. How do you, how do you get sewage from one end of a building to, to another without killing people and making it so that it's healthy at the other end? I don't know that. I didn't know that before I started. I, I probably still don't really know, but I've got a sense that it's really important to the people who, who do that job. And I know the kinds of things that those people need to do in order to do their job better. They do need to manage their time. They do need to communicate more effectively. Sometimes they even need to manage a project, but they do it differently. They do it their way. So we listen, we understand. This whole bit is about partnership. That's about collaboration. That's about working together to common goals. That's about mutual accountability for the outcomes of what we do. That's not about saying, tell me what courses you want, and I'll deliver you some courses. And then if you get 12 people in the room rather than 10, we'll call that a win. No, this is about me understanding what the business needs to achieve from those courses, and the business understanding what I need in order to make that happen. It's a two-way street. There are some things which I need to make sure are put in place in the business. We prepare together. What that means is that I don't do it all. I know I don't do it all, I can't do it all. Line manager, hugely important in the learning relationship. Huge factor, huge part to play in whether or not it happens, in whether or not people make that choice to work differently. So engaging the line manager. We took the time to brief the line managers on what we were gonna do. We get the, um, the leaders of the organization fully communicated with and bought into the learning outcomes of the program. So that the middle bit, the important bit, the bit that probably we all got into the industry to do, happens properly. We enable behavioural change. It's all about changing the way people work. It's all about changing the way they choose to work when they get back into their, their office the next day. We talk about magic. We use that word a lot when we talk about Thames Water. It's in the case study that you've got on your, your chairs. It's in most of, the, uh, most of the sentences, probably, we say to, to each other. But that happens just after that middle stage on the, uh, the programme. At that stage, we've got people ready, people able to do things differently. And that's hugely important. And that's what training, e-learning, all of the things that we'll talk about to, today, that's what they do. But that's not the important bit. We probably know this, but the important bit happens that first day back when they get, uh, when they get back into work the day after. And they make a choice. They can choose to do it the easy way, the way they did it before, the way that got them through their appraisal last year, the way that didn't get them told off when they were in work last week, the way they did it before their manager sent them on the, the course. 
or they can make a choice to work differently. Because they've been bought in, because they're prepared, because their manager believes they should do it, because the organization believes they should do it, and because we demonstrated that we knew what it meant to them. That we provided a realistic behavioral change for the workplace, but more than that, an individual opportunity to grow, if that's what you want to do, uh, to change your own personal circumstances on some of the courses, on our negotiation skills course, for example. You, uh, you negotiate with your energy supplier to get a reduced rate, not your water supplier. Uh, but your energy supplier, to see if you can get a cheaper rate on your bill. So you learn how to negotiate, you put it into practice, and you do it, for real, on the course. And you take that away. So it's about one for us and one for you. One for the business, one for the individual. And that motivates and inspires and drives and creates that change. The last bit then should be easy. You should be able to measure what you're doing, because you knew what you were trying to do, you knew how you were going to measure it. That should just be a doing exercise. Well, let's, let's, let's be careful. That measuring bit is bloody hard. <laughs> let's be honest. There's our nemesis. And I don't worry about it too much. And it will depend where you are and what your responsibilities are and what's expected of you. Let's be really clear, right at the very beginning, the expectations were, can you get some decent training into Thames Water? But no one really knew what that looked like. So when I said to you before about some of the stuff, you may go, well, we did that years ago. My reality is I bought it in 18 months ago. So, you know, when we're talking about the amazing stuff that's around here today, my reality was I had a company that spent years working on competence and didn't spend five minutes working on confidence and then wondered why it wasn't used and wondered why it didn't land. You don't leave our training now without having done it. So I scrapped everything and threw everything out and you'll see in the case study, introductions, are you joking? I'm not a dating agency and it's not Facebook. If you want to know each other's names, bloody well ask. Just go, hello, who are you? Oh, you're Michelle, I'm Teresa, nice to meet you. I don't need a trainer to do that for me, you know? So we said, no, if you want, the trainer wants place cards because that helps, use it. Otherwise, that's gone. That's 20 minutes. And as for those cheesy icebreakers, no thank you. Who cares what your first pet was called? Do I look like I care? We're in the serious business of getting water to 15 million people 365 days a year. Okay? We're also responsible for taking care of the next 100 years of the network in London. If you think I've got 20 minutes to spend on finding out what your kid is called, your pet is called, you know, what you like to do on a Saturday, then dream on, because my world is far more serious than that. So yes, there's games, but they're cleverer. And yes, there's challenges, but they're smarter. But the biggest trick as well, as I give you a for instance, I sat down with someone senior in the business about 10, you know, I don't know, 10 minutes into the organization, and I said, right, so we've got customer agents who are effectively are on a 999 call center. If you've got water shooting out of a road and you phone us up, you go to our emergency contact center, or if you've got sewage pumping up through your bath, you know, we're no different to the police or the emergency services in that respect, you know, you give us a call. Um, but the reality is, is that we are training those people to answer the call like you were calling up about your bill. That is nuts. So I said, right, if this right now is you're teaching them by PowerPoint in a room, boring them to death for seven hours and then wondering why nothing changes, and this is I find a property, somewhere on a sewage treatment works, and I fill it full of poo, and I have photos literally swishing around, clothes, kiddies toys, where's Thames water right now? And they went, oh, my Lord, we're here, we're here, we're here. And I didn't believe them. Because our job is not to believe it sometimes, I think. It's to go, well, you might think you're there, but my job is to push you over here. And that's what part of what we were doing in Thames was to go, well, hang on a minute, I won't frighten the life out of you yet and flood somewhere with poo, but I'm not leaving you in a room with a bunch of PowerPoint slides hoping to goodness, with my fingers crossed my on my back, that it's going to make any difference to the performance of the business. So when I say about being brave, about us being brave, that's the kind of stuff I meant. You know, when we have prepared together, I don't tell the business everything we're doing. I smile at it until everything's under control. And we sneakily go off in a room and we work up a cunning plan. And we quietly bring it in. And that's what we've been doing for 18 months, is just quietly bringing it in. And every time I have my appraisal, I'm going, it's going great. Here's some feedback, everything's fine. Here's some more things and some more things. And bit by bit by bit, the products have been speaking for itself. And you know, every so often you go home and you wait till you're away from the office and you're like, yes, I won today, I really won today. You know, there's been those days as well. Don't get me wrong, there's days I've gone home going, am I gonna pull this off? You know, I'll come back tomorrow and keep going. But I have to tell you, there have been times I've gone home and gone, yeah, we're getting there, definitely. 
So yes, there's this model. Of course, there's a model. There's always a blooming model. But in reality, clever conversations, challenging each other and agreeing what you'll reveal and what you'll keep hidden behind your back pocket until we're ready to reveal it. You know? Sorry, just yeah. hijack that bit, sorry. It's absolutely fine. Um, so, uh, some facts and figures of what we did there in the, the case study as well, and there are some more in the case study, but some, some things there just to tell you a little bit about what we did. There are 16 personal development modules which we've designed. I'm certain that's me. Um, a management development program which we can talk to you about in a bit more, more detail. Over 1,000 learners across an organization. That's out of 5,000 uh, employees. So in terms of reach, quite vast. In terms of number of people in the business that we touch, add to that 1,000 people on the management development population as well. 98% of the people who attend the courses would recommend them to someone else, uh, which is a vastly different from where we started and a huge, huge um, statement about how enjoyable and magic and personally developmental the courses are. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more detail of that. So the personal development? So here's the thing I was up against. My problem is, is that four days in, I walked into a training session delivered by an ex-supplier, and at the end of it, the feedback forms, they all rated it as four out of five. So my first problem was the belief of what good looked like was way off track, because I thought it was horrendous and it was lazy. So if someone to stand there and it takes 90 minutes to do the first exercise, I'm like, jeez, this is like Ben-Hur on a bank holiday when it's raining outside, come on. It was lazy, and I thought, you don't get this. And I've come across some suppliers, I don't know if you've done the same, where I thought, get with it, because what you're proposing is downright lazy, and you're about 10 years behind the times. So when I talk about experiential, I don't mean 90 minutes for the first blooming exercise, because you spent the first 20 minutes doing an icebreaker and introducing everybody. All right, so when I talk about confidence, it's so important to me that, you, that people get to trial it. I know why the old negotiations course didn't work, because they never practiced it. So what we do is, as somewhat Simon said, you bring along a bill. It could be your holiday, it could be your virgin, your sky. And at the end of it, the summative assessment is you phone them up and you get money off your bill. Because there's the other deal I make with the 5,000 people in Thames Water. Whatever I give you, you can use it when you go home. That's the deal. So we'll pay for you to come on it, we'll invest on it, but I promise you'll get to use it. So if actually what you've got planned is an extension on your house, but you're also responsible for some project management stuff, it might be useful if you come and learn how to manage your builder and keep them on track. So we get a payoff, but they get a payoff too. The best feedback I've had is someone got in touch with me and said, yeah, I love the course, 98%, yeah, 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 love the course. I got 50 quid off my home insurance and a voucher for Topshop. <laughs> You know, but, but I can talk to their line manager and the line manager can tell me the difference that person's made in their job every day. What they call me about is go, yeah, I got this too. That's when I know it's stuck. So whether it's, you know, and also we change the whole language, effective communication. That's a cop-out thing a manager says to someone in their PDR when they won't tell them that no one likes the way they speak. You need an effective communication course, I think. No, we have courses like getting the job done. I don't believe in time management because you can't make any more of it, but you can get better at managing your tasks. So if I give you a workshop which is called Get the Job Done, that kind of gives away what it's about. So we really did throw a lot of stuff up in the air and say, okay, let's be brave. Let's, let's really go for it. You know? So um, we have a, a, a really my flagship course, and, and um, it's called It's All About You. It's just called It's All About You. You come and you learn about self-esteem and improve your self-confidence. There are all the techniques that we give you on that day or these two days. And the feedback, the transformational feedback has been phenomenal. People have come back and said, life is different. That's a cool day at work when someone goes, life is different. You know, I never take my eye off the ball about the business benefits because you can't. And I know that. But what I also sold in the personal development modules is whatever we pay relearning, write it off. I'm not having an ROI conversation about what we pay the supplier. The ROI conversation I have in Thames Water is the ROI and the salary of the person who came on my training. Because the ROI for me lives in the world of the line manager. I want a line manager to send me someone who's on 25 grand and producing that performance and what we do between us, for the skills and the confidence I give them, plus the support they get, is 25 grand in a couple of months' time now has got that much performance. 
So it's about the salary, it's not about what I pay the supplier. And I've been really adamant about that in Thames Water. There's so much talk about level four, level five, and you can get yourself tied up in circles. And I've tried it for years. I'm like, seriously, my place is operational, it's fast and it's quick. And I am tired of taking all the responsibility and learning and development to transform performance. I'm like, I'm in the middle. Stop giving me, you know, happy shopper. Expect me to turn it into pedigree chum. You know, crass analogy, I know, but sometimes that's how it feels. I'm like, I've got them for three hours, seriously. Do I look like a makeover show? You know, I'm meant to send them back in a new outfit with new hair and da-da, here I am. It takes longer. I am part of the solution. I am not responsible for it all, and I'm adamant about that. And they're the conversations we have with Reed as well. So we're really challenging together back to the business. And what I love about having a partner is it's no longer a lonely place to be because there's another professional in the room going, and we agree to have a look at it from this point of view. Here's another case study. Here's another business. So that really helps as well. So yeah, we've got things like negotiating, and we build people up. I'm sure most of you do this as well. We've got part ones, part twos. We build people up through the journey, do diagnostics with them, follow it up, all that cool stuff that we... It's bread and butter to us, isn't it? Stuff that we do all the time. But the magic is how people feel now about coming to training in Thames Water. It's now officially cool. And, and I'm all right with that, you know? I know there's, you know, thesis and research and, and those are things you can do, but right now that's a success. And they go back and go, I'm doing it better. And I feel so much more confident. And that's cool to me. So there's the personal development modules. So um, uh, to be honest, as well, a lot of the things we did with Reed was get them to be brave. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes I, I, I wonder how much in it you really are. This is not a master-servant relationship. Otherwise, it'd never work. I don't want my own way all the time-ish. Um, but I shouldn't <laughs> have my own way all the time either. I need that sparring partner, I need that challenge back on me and what we're trying to do and where we want to take it next as well. So there's a whole suite of stuff. I'm happy to talk to you more about it later, but it's stuff that I'm sure you've, you've done before, done yourself. Thank you very much.